he certainly has a demeanor of someone looking to do that. Yeah, that was a stone cold stare down for these two. Big on power one. both these men. Out of 23 fights, 19 have ended by KO. Barreto, a left hook specialist, always out on that lead foot, looking to crank those left hooks to the body into the head. But we've seen him score some nice knockouts with that right hand as well. And you see how he does it. He really disguises that right hand well. He has his opponent thinking about the left hook, and he brings the right hand behind him. That was a super short right hand. He throws that beautifully from the hip. There it is again. See what kind of developments Luis Acosta has made. He told us that, in particular, they focused on his jab. He said that I had a jab. I didn't know how to throw it. I wanted to throw it. But Barreto knows how to throw that right hand, and Acosta just ate a good one. And a left hook. Yeah, those, those punches come in. Very difficult to see. There's no fat on those punches from Barreto. He leads with the hip, fires from his guard. Barreto was talking glowingly about his training camp. He said at the Monterey gym, about eight or nine fighters had fights coming up at the same time. There's a high energy in that gym right now, and this is a high energy opening round for Christian Barreto. Close is one of those guys. He throws everything with power as, as he wings a big left hook. Oh, Barreto, another big right hand. Yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the short, tight punching from Barreto versus the looping wide power shots of Acosta. And Barreto's getting the better of it. Barreto looking very dangerous here in the opening round. He's doing exactly what he said he would try to do. He wants that first round knockout as he digs downstairs to the body. Yeah, he's picking his punches very nicely here. Oh, big left hook upstairs from Barreto. Stop holding. Stop. Break. Break. Barreto now trying to come over the top with a right hand. Acosta digging downstairs to the body, but Barreto just coming inside those winging shots once again. Barreto just can't miss. He's not loading up on these shots at all. He's placing them very, very smartly. But Acosta is just there to be hit. Acosta now just languishing on the ropes. Barreto forcing him back there as he digs downstairs to the body. This is a tremendous opening round from Barreto. He said he was going to go for it. He definitely is. Acosta has been taking the shots well thus far, but a lot of damage being dished out in round one by Barreto. Acosta looking for that uppercut off the ropes. Final 10 seconds of this round. Barreto lands another left hook. Acosta dug one downstairs. Tries again, but he eats a left hook from Barreto in the process. What a round for Barreto. Round two underway. Well, Christian Barreto didn't get the first round knockout that he was hoping for, but it wasn't for a lack of effort. Yeah, I know. He couldn't miss a power punch that round. And he came out, start round two with a big right hand to the chin of Acosta. Acosta letting that jab go. He said that that was one of the major improvements that he had made. Oh, I have to think he's got to use it a little bit more to stop some of that nonstop pressure that Barreto was applying in the opening round. Now, it seems like Acosta wanted to fight firepower with firepower. He was loading up with big, sweeping hooks. Wasn't able to find the target. As Beretta was definitely getting out of the way and going back to his shorter, cleaner, sharper punches throughout. See a little adjustment here from Beretta there, letting Acosta come to him, countering well as well. Acosta tries to load up on a big left hook. 
close to still dangerous. He does have that pop. I was thinking the same thing. All these shots are dangerous. And Acosta is only going to need one of them. That's a nice left hook downstairs, but back comes Beretta with two chopping right hands over the top. Oh, downstairs God. goes Beretta with two right hands. I'm telling you, man, is tough. He's been hitting some big shots early on. He's got a good poker face, too. Costa rolling with some of those shots along the ropes. And we've got another set. Oh, a young undefeated guy. Oh, young guys early in their career putting it on the line. Big overhand right from Acosta. Not from uh, Pareto, rather. Both men throwing heavy stuff nonstop. Acosta at a serious disadvantage Ooh. here, trying to land it with his back along the ropes. But he's certainly trying. Barreto just has a pin there right now. Yeah, he's not doing himself a favor by fighting off the ropes like that. Look at that. Top Triple, top. quadruple left hook, and he turns the tables on Barreto. And Barreto holds on voluntarily there. One of those clearly had an effect on Christian Barreto. Yeah, as much success as Barreto has had, Costa still throwing big, heavy shots now and here in round two starting to land. Final 30 seconds here of round two. As Barreto pivots and throws a nice left hook that knocks Acosta off balance, but he comes back with two left hands of his own. Acosta now really targeting the body with that left hand, double tripling it up at times. That's smart on his part because he's got a guy who's throwing a lot of punches. Barreto just hitting anything right now, but Acosta back to that strategy of trying to land the left hook to the body. Smart move, start low, work your way up the body. Two former world champions collide in their cruiserweight debuts when the Mexican star Gilberto Ramirez takes on Long Island's own Joe Smith Jr. live on the zone Saturday, October 7th. Let's take a look back at some of the action from round two. Yeah, this is a good action-packed round. First round was all Barreto, but Costa came back quite a bit in this round, landed some good shots, left hooks to the body mainly, but landed some good shots upstairs too. But here we see Barreto pinning Acosta across the ropes and landing at will with power shots. A little bit of better round for Acosta, but still a dominant Barreto round. El Capitan, Christian Barreto. Round three begins. Well, it's a six-round fight, and these guys are, are fighting like they don't have a lot of time to work with right now. Been bombs away in both directions, primarily coming from Christian Barreto, but you see Luis, <coughs> excuse me, Luis Acosta trying to get on top of Barreto here. Sorry, Chris, seasonal allergies are going bombs away on me right now. <laughs> Good dig to the body there from Acosta. Yeah, that was a nice shot right along the belt line. As we take a look at the power punches landed through round two. You see both these guys chucking a lot of them, but Christian Barreto landing at a 56% clip with his power shots at the moment. Yeah, it's only 22% from Acosta. But again, it only takes one punch. None of those copy backs may matter if Acosta lands one of those big shots. The tempo slowing down a little bit here in round three. Barreto isn't just all over Acosta quite in the same way, but as I say that, he lands a nice left hook over the top. Barreto doing a nice job of pushing off with his shoulder to land the overhand right and left hooks. Starting to see now why Barreto was so confident in the fighter meetings yesterday. Has a game plan, knows how to execute. He did just look up the clock, though. Barreto told us in fighter meetings that Acosta, he lacks basic fundamentals, he lacks defense. He didn't seem concerned at all, really, about his ability to land. And the punch stats right now are making him look like Nostradamus. <laughs> yeah, he was all smiles in the fighter meeting. He has been nothing but all seriousness here in the fight. 
Trading shots to the body are Acosta and Barreto right now. Yeah, man, that's that push-up I'm talking about. Barreto does that very well. He's controlling the action on the inside. And when you have a puncher, it's a good idea to keep them on their heels. Most punchers don't, don't hit as hard going backwards. Physical battle here on the inside. The hands are free. Barreto winning that physical battle, but Acosta trying to fight him off with those left hooks to the body again. Yeah, I love how he doubles it up. Body shot, body shot, same hand. Yeah, nice work from Acosta to just find room where there is very little to get around the guard and land on Barreto, but Barreto coming back with right hands. Fifteen seconds of round three. Credit to the official here for allowing both Barreto and Acosta to work their way out of these clinches here. And I'll do it for round three. Costa corner, still looking very calm. Costa's been getting some work in with the likes of Regis Progre and Oshaki Foster. Worked in the, the Bobby Benton gym. Like some other fighters we've seen here on overtime, uh, the Acosta family also had a backyard boxing gym. We've been hearing that, the Murataya family. Yeah, more and more, there's, there's a lot of outdoor gyms yeah. that are getting a lot of attention lately. Well, you know, we have, there's the garage gym craze now, and then perhaps backyard boxing rings are going to be the new thing. As Barreto falls short with that right hand. Barreto, as we mentioned, grew up literally boxing in the streets. It wasn't until his barber told him where there was actually boxing infrastructure where he could learn. He told him, hey, there's a boxing club over there in Barrio Obrero. You can go learn to fight there. He's turned himself into a fine young prospect right now as he lands a nice left hook oh. in a three-punch combination that rocks the head back of Luis Acosta. Moments before that, Acosta had landed a nice overhand right. Yes. He seemed to shake Barreto a little bit, but he came right back with a three-punch combination. Right now, guys, so a spray of sweat off the head of Acosta when he got cracked. Right we'll take a look. The uh, camera, we see what the Barreto corner is seeing right now. Barreto cornered by Emilio Lozada, that new trainer that we mentioned, working with him for the very first time here tonight. As Barreto doubles up on that left hook again, make it three right along the belt line. You know, and, and Acosta landed a really good left hook there, but just came up tall and ate two punches for it. Barreto's just been doing a good job, as you mentioned, just staying tight. And even when Acosta is landing, Barreto's hands are still moving, and he wants to get it back. And it makes you forget about what Acosta's landing, and rightfully so. Yeah, well, he's also landing at a three to one clip. Yes, so. right. <laughs> All the good work that Acosta does, Barreto gets it right back. Very impressed with the short punching of Barreto. Even though he's got a guy that he's hitting with everything, he's not loading up on the shots to try and get more power. He's staying consistent, keeping tight, keeping his technique and his fundamentals right. Costa getting a little bit wild there in that exchange. And Barreto again, straight to the point with the right hand, snaps the head back of Acosta. You know, I'm starting to realize something from Christian Barreto here. I mean, you know, we, we look always, we look past the numbers of the record. You know, he hasn't fought a lot of good opposition thus far. So this, that 
Seven KOs in nine fights may be a little bit of a misnomer because he's been landing bombs on Acosta all night long and he's been taking them. Well, they are trading bombs along the ropes right now. This is a tremendous action, but it is Barreto who is getting the best of it through round four. And let's send it over to Sofia Gutierrez, who is standing by with Elijah Pierce. Thanks, Corey. I'm here with Elijah Pierce now. The vibes here are amazing. Obviously, we saw your, we see your nice belt. Tell me, how proud are you to be winning the first OTX belt? Oh, I'm extremely proud. You know, I put in a lot of work for this, you know, and um, it's just a joy to get to come out here and find, you know, and be, be a spectator as opposed to being inside the ring this time and getting to just to enjoy the fights. And how is OTX different than other fights? Um, honestly, I would say just the, the arrangement. I, I, of course, the overtime round, the overtime round itself, as y'all seen last week, you know, that was that was really cool. You know, it, it, it brought a lot of excitement. A lot of the fans, they was really going for it. Awesome. Thank you. Have fun tonight. Absolutely. Thank you. Elijah Pierce taking in the action here, and there's been plenty of it in this fight between Luis Acosta and Christian Barreto as Barreto oh. comes firing a right hand and he lands a beautiful left hook. Beautiful roll under left hook over the top. Cracks across in the center of the ring. Oh, nice short shot from Acosta yeah, there. That was a terrific shot. Rolled with that just in the same way Barreto did. Barreto, excuse me, came back with the right hand, but look at Barreto coming back. Tremendous exchange here in the center of the ring to open up round five. Yeah, Acosta, he throws everything hard. He loads up. But it's the short punches. When Acosta tightens up that right hand, he's having really good success on the inside. Doesn't need to load everything up. One thing we should point out, you know, if, if you're a fan of Acosta and you're worried about punch resistance after that knockout two fights ago, he's taken some serious stuff in this fight. I was thinking the exact same thing. I don't think you can question the kid's chin anymore. Got hit with a great shot against De, De Los Santos, but this is, uh, I, I, it looks like he's recovered to me because he's been getting hit with big shots walking right through him. Acosta digging to the body with that left hook. Right now, guys, let's go. Punch out. Punch out. Barreto still able to just muscle Acosta back against the ropes. Good left hook to the body. Acosta comes back with one of his own. Technique getting a little bit sloppier here in the fifth round. A little more wrestling here on the inside. It's been a really physical battle here between Acosta and Barreto as Acosta starts to open up and Barreto oh. gets there first with the right hand and another. Yeah, I mean, the, the way these guys opened up in round number one, the fatigue is starting to set in a little bit early. Late in round five here, but it's again, it's Barreto's short punches that are winning the day. Big left hook connects there from Barreto. Acosta just continues to fire away. Yeah, and another thing about Acosta, he loads up so much, he finds himself off, off balance at times, so when he does get hit, it looks even worse. Yeah, you're right. Some of these combinations he's throwing, Chris, it, it looks like he's under duress as he's throwing them. He, he, you know, he's clearly off balance as he's throwing them. And he's loading up so much, he's throwing everything into every punch like that. And when he gets hit, it looks that much worse. About 15 seconds of round five. Scraping right hand there from Barreto again. If I'm Barreto, I am thinking, man, what is this guy's chin made of? This guy hitting him and everything. Another action round between Acosta and Barreto. Well, the rising lightweight contender, William Zapeta, takes on the Philippine zone, Mercito Hesta, and one of his toughest tests to date. That is live here on the zone on September 16th. Here we see some of that action for round number five. Big overhand looping shots from Acosta, and it's the short, tight, compact punches 
from Barreto. Here we see some action. These guys training back and forth. And again, the straight shots are the ones that are winning the day. And even though the shots may not be hurting across, that they're not getting off balance, they're very eye-catching. It's hard not to see those shots and their effect. Sixth and final round. We'll see if Christian Barreto can maintain his undefeated record and score what some might consider an upset here over Luis Acosta. Despite Acosta coming into this fight with a loss on his record, obviously to a fantastic fighter two fights ago. I would consider it an upset. I think, you know, based on, on their records and who they fought, you know, Acosta would be the favorite coming into this fight, even his last fight. He, he fought a very good prospect and, and won. Alberto said something interesting. Often we hear fighters say, this is the best camp I ever had. Often Ooh. here on overtime, we're hearing fighters say, this is the longest camp we ever had. But he said, this is the most structured camp I ever had, which mm. I found interesting. Yeah, it's good to differentiate those 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 things. Having a long camp not always a good thing. Right. Having a structured camp is, though. A long camp could be a very unstructured camp, perhaps. Yeah, it could be a very bad thing, too. Overtraining is real. The Acosta trying to get loose along the ropes once more. Oh, with a nice left hook, an acknowledgement there from Acosta. I, and I don't know how Acosta is walking through some of these. He looks to be unfazed by these shots. And they've been landing clean. They're big shots. They're consistent. Not only is he unfazed, he has time to nod his head, acknowledge the shot, and continue coming forward. Yeah, you missed it, but he had a sly smile on his face at the beginning of the sixth <laughs> round in his own corner. It's like, oh, man, having fun out there getting, getting cracked. Well, I think the question now is, does Luis Acosta need a knockout here in the sixth round to win this fight? Yeah, a clash of heads there. Cut over the eye over both, yeah, both I think guys. That might have opened something up. Uh, at least on the face of Acosta. There was a little swelling over the eye of Barreto, too. I'm not sure if that's what you can really see from here. Definitely cut over the eye. Of Acosta, I believe this is right eye. Yeah, you see it split the eyebrow there. Oh, yeah. That's a nasty cut. Nasty. Nasty horizontal gash nice. there. That is not good. Uh, yeah, it's a bad spot above the eye. Also, it's angular. Yeah, that's 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 a very nasty cut. I would be surprised if they let this go on. The doctor is in the ring. Yeah. The music is being played. I don't know. We haven't received an official indication, but we're going to take a look at the replay here. Looked like the, 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 the doctor mouthed that we're going to stop it. Or not. Oh, and Beretta will have a, a point, point taken away. Really? For a headbutt. That... I mean, I don't remember there being a warning for head clashes. And it, it didn't look like it was blatant. That's... Wow. Wow, that. Wow. You know, if you are Team Barreto, you certainly are going to take issue with that. They didn't get too animated upon hearing about it, but uh, I suppose that means in the mind of the referee that he was so reckless with his head Ooh. that it deserved a deduction. But Barreto oh. trying to get that point back with a big left hook. And Barreto got hit with a right hand, too. He certainly did. Acosta. Gunning for it. We wonder, does he need a knockout here in the six? He's fighting like he does. And he's fighting like he's upset about that cut. As he should be. Pouring blood right now is Luis Acosta pawing at a nasty gas right now. That is a hideous, hideous cut over the eye of Luis Acosta. Right, that thing is wide open and flapping. Oh, Acosta just loading up with the right hand. And Acosta not changing his style at all to protect that eye. He wants the knockout. Probably sensing that he needs it here. Barreto ducks underneath, comes back with a trio of left hooks. Tremendous action from start to finish. Luis Acosta double tough for taking some of that leather from Christian Barreto and for fighting through that cut. Reads as follows. Judges Webb and Oliver scored about identically at 58 to 55. And Judge Cronin scores about 
59 to 54. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. From Puerto Rico, El Capitan, Cristian Barreto. Well, a coming 